Good morning, everybody. Good to see you today. It's time to get our worship hour underway. This is Brother Cecil, music director here. We're uh, looking forward to a good time in God's house today. I want to remind everyone that, uh, that we are broadcasting this by not only radio in our parking lot in the local area, but we're also recording this for YouTube and for Facebook videos. So, uh, Looking forward to a great time today, and we appreciate everybody that had a part in, in getting our, our services broadcast over the airwaves and social media. And we will continue to do this and looking forward to, uh, to live streaming at some point in time, and we are excited about being together today. If you're visiting with us, we're glad you're here. Uh, well, well, Pam and I have a, I saw an old friend in the back visiting with us. We're glad, glad that her family is with us today. And all of you that are home folks, it's good to see you. I hope everybody's well today, and let's do a little singing. Let's take your hymnal, turn to number 197, and let's stand this morning and sing number 197. All right, here we go. Troublesome times are here, Hearts with fear, freedom we all hold dear. Now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, safe from the chastity. Pride seek to wake pilgrim, tried Christians away. Fix to sing this last verse. Now, how many of you believe that Jesus is really coming soon? I do. You look at what's going on in the world around us. It can't be long before he come and takes his children home. So let's sing that last verse, and let's really sing this last verse, Miss Lois. Here we go. Troubles will soon be or happy for Yeah. 
Birthdays, birthdays this week. Brother Clozell is having a birthday today. Happy birthday to Brother Clozell. He turns 90 years old today. Amen. <laughs> Sir. All right, let's get happy birthday, Miss Lois. You've got it in there somewhere. We're going to do that. That's awesome. All right, that's all right. We're good. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brother Closell. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Amen. Amen. All right. Also this week, Riley Hills having a birthday on the second. Jim Abel Dido also having a birthday on the 2nd, along with C.J. Robertson uh, also have an anniversary on the 2nd. That takes care of today through next, through next uh, Saturday. Next Saturday is the 4th, and we celebrate our nation's independence. Uh, it's a sad thing where our country is going. So let's keep in prayers for that. But in the meantime, we wish happy birthday to these folks. We have uh, anyone else having a birthday this week through uh, today through next Saturday? All right. There's no anniversaries uh, listed this week, so does anybody have an anniversary today through Saturday? All right. God has blessed us so much, we're going to do our normal thing of good amen on three to thank him for every blessing he sends our way. One, two, three. Amen. amen. Thank you so much for being here. You may be seated. Well, good morning. Good morning. Happy 4th of July. I know it's still June. I've got my 4th of July stuff on, so next week when I'm dressed like all of y'all and y'all are all dressed like this, just know I had it on this week and y'all have it on next week. But uh, anyway, uh, I did want to make an announcement about Vacation Bible School. Uh, we, also, we still have a sign-up sheet back there for, our, for some candy that we're looking for. We do a store every year at the end of Vacation Bible School where the kids can take some, the tickets they've earned all week and use those to get candy and, and little trinkets here and there. So um, with the candy, we've put a sign-up sheet out front so that you can kind of help uh, fray some of the cost of that for us. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, the whatever candy that may be out there, um, I'm going to try to move it. Uh, I'll try to move it today. But uh, that candy, if there's any candy that's put out there, it is for Vacation Bible School, um, unless it's otherwise labeled. So, uh, Please don't, you know, mess with any of that or anything like that. That, that will be for Vacation Bible School. So um, <clears throat> your kids will get it just a little later than today. Um, if we can have that candy in at least by next Sunday um, so we can know if I need to run and get some more or anything like that. Um, if you will have that in next Sunday um, so that I can judge how much we have. Also, Vacation Bible School is next week. So uh, teachers be preparing. Uh, teachers need to have their rooms decorated by next week, obviously. So um, please, you know, get on that. Um, also be studying your lessons, teachers. We're getting ready for, for
for uh, that week. I'm expecting a lot of uh, people to come. Uh, you may say, well, that's just that's silly to think. Well, it may be, but I'm thinking and I'm praying it. So uh, I, I do expect us to have a good crowd this year at Vacation Bible School. So be in prayer for our VBS. Um, we need prayer for our teachers, but also for the students because there's some that will be here that week. Uh, we may, you know, say we only have 80 kids. Uh, there are going to be kids there uh, that have never heard the gospel, or at least if they have, it's only been two or three times. So uh, just be in prayer for those kids, but also our kids as they try to learn some things. This year's VBS material is very good. Uh, very, it's, it's, it's deep in, in the scripture, so be praying for everybody that, that's a part of that. Uh, we also have an adult class starting at 6 o'clock every night. Uh, so you are more than welcome to come out and join our adult class. Uh, like I say, every night at 6 o'clock we'll be having that. Uh, other than that, Brother Tim, I think that's all my... All right, good morning. Good morning. Well, let me try that again. Good morning. good morning. Well, I don't know what happened. We started Sunday school and our preaching attendance dropped off. I don't know. Uh, hey, those of you who weren't here for Sunday school, we are having Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Uh, all, all the, uh, from, if you're not in Brother Burt's class, morning and evening, uh, those that are in the class above that will be meeting here in the auditorium. And uh, I, had, I had a good time this morning. I don't know whether those that are sitting in here listening did or not, but I always have a good time when I get in the Word of God. Amen. But let me encourage you to be a part of uh, both Sunday school uh, on Sunday morning and Bible study time. Now, Miss Sandra's class will meet tonight. There's some that asked about that. Her, you will, if you're in Miss Sandra's class, you'll go to that class tonight. Everybody else will be in here with it. Miss Sandra's class, and down will be over in the in the building. But remember that we are trying to move back to somewhat a semblance of a normal schedule. Yes, ma'am, Miss Sandra, I see you raising your hand. All right, y'all get that? You hear your name? Miss Sandra called your name. She needs to meet with you immediately after service this morning. In relation to Bible school, uh, do I need some... We need, we need, I need some men that are able-bodied or somewhat able-bodied tonight uh, to, to hang around after service. We've got to do some work down in the uh, dining hall and the gym. We've got to move some chairs and tables and get things prepared for Bible school, and we'll get part of it done. And next Sunday, we'll have to make preparation in all of our classrooms. But if you'll, some of you able-bodied young men, uh, Brother uh, Colby and Brother Jet and Brother, uh, Brother McQueen, Brother Brian, and... Uh, yeah, let's see who else I'm pick out. It's young. Uh, Brother Jason. Uh, Brother Jason volunteered. Amen. Uh, at any rate, tonight after service, we need you, Brother Austin, to get where you can go down. we got some things to get ready there. But we're looking forward to VBS, looking forward to getting back. While I'm thinking about it, I, I, I've, I've looked at the calendar. I think the third Sunday night in July would be a good time for us to do our little get-together for our graduates. Everybody, that look okay to everybody? Third Sunday night in July, we'll have a fellowship following our, our nighttime service, uh, honoring our graduates, amen? Uh, you know more about that than I do, but you're, you're allowed to set up a table and, uh, down, in the, down in the dining hall, and, and uh, that'll be a place for folks to put gifts and whatever pictures you want to put on there. Just make sure, just make sure they're appropriate to go on the table for folks to see. Okay, uh, I've seen some graduation pictures that uh, I surprised. Be careful, Caitlin. <coughs> That's my granddaughter, Caitlin. For those of you who may not know it, Caitlin is actually blonde. <coughs> she was just walking down a perfectly flat floor. Perfectly flat floor, and she nearly failed. You see that, brother? Say something. You're looking at your book. 
But at any rate, well, you just want it chose to put them on. Didn't nobody hold a gun to your head and make you put them on. So if you can't walk in them, don't wear them. Amen. Hey, Riley. Hey, you, son. Good to see you. I ain't seen you since the pandemic started. Hey, man, I'm glad to see you today. Good to be in God's house. Glad you're here. Just remember to pray for those that are sick. Miss Betty Sue Scarborough, remember her. She's in Memorial Hospital having some real kidney issues. Remember Sister Debbie Ragland. She had a difficult week this week. She ended up at the emergency room for a few hours. And you pray for her uh, and Brother Mike and the family as, uh, as she's, she, may, she may be moving closer to that time she gets to go to the house. So you pray for her today. Brother Cecil, it's yours. All right, Brother Curtis, come on down. Time for our children's offering this morning. Brother Curtis, thank you, Peyton. We appreciate that. And as always, we need to pray for our little ones, our young folks. All of us need prayer, but what these young folks are facing in the coming days is we as, as older adults need to pray for them, to remember them. All right, let's take a hymn once again, turn to number 195, if you will, stand this morning. This will be our offertory hymn this morning, hymn number 195. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of Oh 
Jimmy Ladner, would you have our prayer this morning? Dear Lord, as we come to you this morning, Lord, we just want to give thanks for this beautiful morning you gave us, Lord. Lord, just thank you, Lord, for this church, Lord, and what it stands for, Lord. And Lord, I just ask this morning that you just bless this offering, Lord, to further thy cause, Lord. And Lord, I just ask you to be to Brother Tim, Lord, as he brings a word to us, Lord, this morning. Lord, I just pray, Lord, if there's any loss, that today, Lord, that they come to you and be saved, Lord. Lord, I just ask your blessings for the ones sick, Lord, and the ones that didn't make it in this morning, Lord. Lord, just be with them and give them comfort, Lord. Lord, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Take your hymn once again, if you turn to number 20. Another good old hymn that we love to sing. Speaks and the sound of his voice. 
Someone said you can't go back home again That things will not ever be as good as they've been Oh, but I got good news for you Then heaven comes into view one glimpse and you'll know the best is yet to come. And some call it heaven, I call it home. And some call it dreaming, well 
let me dream on. Dream on. And some call it paradise. Somewhere beyond the sky. Some call it heaven. I call it home. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind. And it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpet. Gabriel sounds a call at the midnight cry. At the midnight cry, we'll be going home when Jesus sets out on a cloud to call his children. Shall rise to meet him in the air, and then those that remain will be quickly changed at the midnight cry. I look around me, I see prophecies broken. And the signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. Oh, I can almost hear the Father as he says, Son, go get your children. At the midnight cry, the, midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps out on a cloud to call his children. And the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
midnight cry. When the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again. At the midnight cry. At the midnight cry. When Jesus comes again. comes May I say to you that cry is a lot closer than probably what even we that are sitting here in this building that know a little bit about our Bible realize today that it's close, very, very close. If you just bow your heads for a moment, these are still praying. We want to give them ample time. Do business with God this morning. Open your Bibles this morning to the book of 1 John, chapter number 5. Guy, I want you to halt the recording for a minute and leave the radio aspect on, please, sir. I want to, I want to start out this morning. I've got a couple of things I need to talk about. And then I'm on. Bibles, Guy, you can put us back on recording. And uh, do pray for... for Brother Freddie, he's got the shingles. Sister Nancy's trying to recover from her knee surgery. Jennifer's still making progress, doing well. Remember Sister Rosie, she come in this morning and told me she broke her foot. Brother Johnny wouldn't get out of the bed and she kicked him. I don't, she really don't know how she broke it, amen. But uh, at any rate, pray for her and others that are sick today that God would touch them and raise them up. Stand to your feet. Open your Bibles, 1 John chapter number 5. 1 John chapter number 5. I want to try to look at that thought this morning. What is Christianity? We would probably be shocked if I started right here with Sister Ornell and let everybody give their definition of what I meant variation we would get, many different thoughts we would get about what Christianity is. And, and I'm not saying 
probably none of them would be really wrong, more than likely, because uh, you sit in a Bible preaching church, you've been in a Bible preaching church for a long, long time, this, this church is blessed, it's had good men of God that, that stayed true to the Word of God and, and preached the Bible, and so there would probably not be any gross variations in what, uh, the, what, what we would hear if we were to give you the opportunity to do that this morning, to answer that question of what is Christianity. But the Bible gives us a specific answer to that question, and part of it's found here, not all of it, but part of it's found here in 1 John chapter number 5. I'm going to begin reading in verse number 9. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. Now, we receive the witness of men on many things. How many of you this morning got up and watched the weather? How many have done that? One or two or three or four or five. Okay? Uh, that's receiving the witness of men. You listen to those people. Uh, my, my grandson thinks they're the most inaccurate bunch there is. Uh, he has great difficulty with weather people, meteorologists, okay? Uh, but there's a lot of different ways. How many, of you, how many of you today, sometime or another, either by social media or by sitting down and watching with your eyes and listening to your ears, will try to get up to date on the latest news? How many of you will do that? That's, that's receiving the witness of men. An amazing thing today, the day and age in which we live, how, Brother Bert, that within a, within a few seconds of something happening completely around the other side of the world, we can receive the witness of men concerning that event. Now, if you have three or four different men see it, you'll get three or four different opinions as to that event. But we're constantly receiving the witness of men. He says, he, uh, he that receiveth the witness, we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. In churches all over America today, there will be people that will sit and see the witness of men. Some of them true to the Word of God, some of them not true to the Word of God. Listen to me. He says if we do that, if we, if we receive the witness of men, He reminds us that the witness of God is great. Now there's a lot of different things you could, you could talk about in that word greater, but let me just set up the witness for you today. Here, here's what God has to say. This book that I hold in my hand. I happen to personally have the conviction that it is the old 1611 King James Bible that is God's witness for man today. Amen. You may not, you may not hold that conviction, but this preacher does, and I make no apologies for it. Amen. I've, 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 that's, what, that's what God has used to witness to my life, my entire life. I... I do, not, I do not have difficulty. There are passages that I may not understand anything. I have no problem with the King James language. And, and a lot of it I've been allowed to understand because the one that wrote it lives inside of me. Amen. The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which He hath testified of His Son. Now, John's going to give us some specific instruction, but I say to you, this entire book that I hold in my hand called the Bible is the witness of God concerning His Son. Amen. This book has a lot of great interesting characters in it, but every bit of it is designed to be a witness of God's Son. Amen. Now let's read on and see what else it says. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God 
hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his who? Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you, that you believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, not guess, hope, think so, but know, that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Father, we love you this morning. Help us for a few minutes as we try to consider this thought this morning. Lord, of what is Christianity? In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to look at this from a negative standpoint. With You've been around here very often. You know that sometimes I do that. First thing I want to look at is what Christianity is not. And may I say to you, Christianity is not in a church. Just because you attend Ten Mile Baptist Church, that does not make you a Christian. It's, it's not, it's not, Christianity is not something you get by becoming a, an active, participating member of Ten Mile Baptist Church. You can do that, still be lost. You say, well, how's that possible, preacher? Well, let me ask you this question. In the three short years I've been here, have we had any people who have made another profession of faith? We've received them into our fellowship. Right? It's not gaining church membership. It, listen to me. Just because you're faithful to going to church meetings, that does not make you a Christian. You do not become a Christian by attending church meetings. And you don't even, you don't even attain Christianity by giving of your, of your resources, of your time and your talent and, 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 and your treasure that God's blessed you with. So Christianity's not in... A, a local assembly. Okay? Number two, Christianity is not something you conquer. We hear much about education today. Listen to the news media. If you listen to the witness of men today, a lot of them believe that the reason our country is in such great chaos is because folks are not educated enough. Amen. About all of my life, Brother Kenneth, I've heard folks say, man, if we can just improve our education, if we can get everybody where they can read and write and, 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 and this and that and the other, then all of our problems will go away. Well, I've been on this earth nearly 69 years and it hadn't worked yet. There's more people getting educations today than there's been in human history. Not just in America, but around the world. There are more folks going to college and graduating from college nowadays with degrees in specific areas than there's ever been in the history of humanity, but yet it don't seem to be changing our society in it. So it's, it's, not, in, it's not in education. You don't, it's, it's not only that, but, it, but it's not in, I, I use this word simply to alliterate it, escalation. Anybody... Ever been on an escalator? Escalators, most of the time we think of them, we think of something that's taking us from one level up to a, another. Now they've got descending escalators as well. But it's, it's not, if you will, I use another word, it's not by edification. It's not by, it's, it's not by uh, climbing, the, if you will, the social ladder in society. It's not attained by climbing the economic ladder in society, sitting in this building this morning, we got folks that are all different levels of education, 
We've got folks that are on all different levels economically. Some, some are doing quite well by the blessings of God. Others may just be keeping the wolves away from the door, keeping the lights on, as you say. There, we, we see that even city in this great church. And may I say to you, it does not come by employment. Doesn't matter. We got this building today that do all kind of different things. We got some that's like I was yesterday. Yesterday was a I'm doing nothing day. My my son came to me earlier and he said uh, he said I can't believe what I heard about you yesterday. See, it gets out. I don't know who told him. Probably the lady that I live with, but. Uh, he had gotten word that yesterday I did nothing. I didn't. I didn't do anything yet. My grass needed cutting yesterday. You know when it's going to get cut? Tomorrow, maybe. I wait another day or two. I can call somebody to cut hay off of it. I mean, yesterday was just one of those days when I just, I ain't sure about why I did, but I just decided I wasn't doing nothing. I sat in my recliner a great deal of the day. I spent a good bit of time in my office, but I, as far as going outside, I think late yesterday afternoon, uh, I went out and helped Miss, well, actually, she embarrassed me. Okay, I'm going to just be honest. We were sitting out on the porch in my day of doing nothing, and uh, Brother Sonny, she got the, the watering pail to water flowers. Flowers are beautiful, but they are a lot of work. Amen. And, and so I was sitting there on that little glider, just gliding back and forth, and she goes over there, and, and Brother Mike knows what's going on. Okay. And I sit there, Brother James, in my day of doing nothing, of being unemployed, if you will, until she grabbed that thing up in her hand. And then I got up and went and watered the flower. Outside of going over to the Robertsons yesterday and preaching in a family gathering, they had for a few minutes, yesterday was an unemployment day for me. I did nothing. Today I'm doing what God's called me to do. I'm laboring in the Word today. Amen? But that does not make me a Christian. So it, it's, 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 not, it's, not, it's not something we do in, in, by getting into the church. It's not something that we conquer. And Christianity is not even a compromise. What do you mean a compromise? Well, folks have this misconceived idea today that if their good outweighs their bad, then they must be a Christian. Listen, this world's full of people that every single day their good outweighs their bad. There, there are numerous people that every day they go about doing good. They help folks, Brother Bert. They, they lend a helping hand. They go and reach out to their neighborhood and... They do all kind of things. Their good way outweighs their bad. But that's not what Christianity is. May I say to you, Christianity is not a clothing either. You don't get up in the morning and put your Christianity on. Amen. I do pray that you get up in the morning and put clothes on. Please do before you go outside. Amen. Some, some don't put many on, but... Uh, but at any rate, it's not something... I, we don't get up on Sunday morning and put our robe of Christianity on. That's not what it is. And may I say to you, Christianity is not even acting like Christ. Christianity, let's look at what the Scripture says. It is Christ. It's not a plan... I'm glad you gave us a plan. We ought to have a plan. Plans are good. My plan for the balance of the day is if Jesus don't come get me before I get through preaching, I plan to go to the house and eat some lunch. <clears throat> I plan sometime during the afternoon, Brother James, to have another one of them do nothing times. Well, I am going to do something. I'm going to get in my recliner and try to take me a nap. <laughs> I plan to spend some time this afternoon in God's Word in preparation for tonight. But, but my Christianity is not involved in a plan. It's in a person. I'm not made a Christian by a plan. 
I'm made a Christian by a person. May I say to you, it's not in reform. When I was growing up, I remember troubled kids. One of the things that I remember well was is if you get in trouble, you go into reform. Many, many of you older folks here remember that term? I mean, it was pretty serious in them days. Bad kids got sent to reform school. They don't even call them that anymore. I think now the term is alternatives. That reform school didn't, that didn't sound very nice. Alternative school, the, 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 the qualifications for it, I, I don't know what they are nowadays, but it hadn't, the, the reason for it has not changed, amen? Now my, my reform school was, uh, <coughs> was bending across the uh, a lot of reform in our So it didn't work very well. Christianity is not a new leaf. It's a new life. Any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And in Christianity, it's not a turning around in the road, it is a changing of roads. We talked about that a little bit in the Robertson's event yesterday, family gathering that we start out on the road headed to hell. I got news for you. I didn't turn around on that road. I got off of that road. Amen. What is Christianity? Well, let me give you three simple thoughts, and we'll give invitation and go to the house. Number one, it's a receiving of Christ in salvation. It is a receiving Christ. Without Christ, you cannot be a Christian. Our world is so confused in this area today. You, you, our, our, the witness of men at that there are Christian churches and non-Christian churches. No, 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 I'm sorry. There ain't but one church. Amen. That's the church of the born again. Amen. Thank God. I'm glad I'm part of that church. I'm proud to be a member of Ten Mile Baptist Church, but that's not what's going to get me to heaven. That's not what makes me a Christian. Amen. I've been, I've been born again. I didn't get reformed. I got reborn. Amen. I got a second birth. Amen. It's a receiving of Christ in salvation. It is a receiving of the greatest gift that's ever been made available to man. sitting there looking at this money. I was thinking about asking my wife. I illustrated this yesterday with the Robertson family. And I don't, I promise you, I don't have one. I gave away the last bit of money I had in my wallet yesterday over there, illustrating. But God offers to us a free gift. And if I could talk my wife out of a $100 bill today to illustrate this, not likely that that's going to happen, but if I could talk her out of one, and I, and I held that $100 bill out and said, here, here's a gift. Who wants it? First one that got here should get them a free gift. Now, if I said to Trevor sitting here, Trevor, I got this $100 bill, son, and I got, I got, a, I got two, two vehicles, two, three vehicles, Miss Sandra's car, my church car, and my truck. I want you to wash them, make them look like they're just come off or sitting on the showroom floor somewhere. And when you get through that, I'll give you this $100 bill. Would that be a gift, Trevor? Don't think so. Because I put stipulations on it. But if I held that $100 bill up, anybody want to volunteer a $100 bill today for me to illustrate this? I held that $100 bill up and said, sure, you want it. If I could do that, kids, be careful, because I promise you we'd have some adults that would run over you to get to it. And I just gave it to them. Salvation is a free gift. It's free to us. It cost heaven its very best. It was costly for heaven. Amen. It was costly for God. Salvation. Christianity is, 
is, is receiving of Christ in salvation. It is, it, is, it is a gift of God, not of works. No, no. Old Trevor had to clean all three of them vehicles. I'm telling you, it'd be worth more than $100, son. I promise you that. That wouldn't be a free gift to him. It's by grace. I was sitting there yesterday in my do-nothing day. Sister Sandra and I were sitting there, and I was looking out at one of those running flower trellises we have in the front yard, and, and there, was, there, was, there was two vines sitting up there. And by the way, I didn't point it out this morning, but they did meet. One's coming up one side of the trellis, one's coming up the other. And yesterday the morning they were sitting there and it was like they were looking at each other. And I got to thinking about the thought, Brother Bert, Brother Austin, Brother Curtis, when mercy and grace met. Sometime during the night of the early part of this morning, mercy and grace got together. <laughs> That's what happens when we get saved, Amen. Mercy and grace meet up, amen, and the results are real good, amen. I'm glad, I'm glad to report to you that, that it's for by grace, through faith, you are saved. And it is a gift from God. Christianity is the receiving of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't see him, but he lives in me. Amen. You can't see him, but he lives inside of me, amen. That's the reason I'm never alone. That's the reason when sing that song, no, never alone. You can be, listen, you could be in the backside of a 15,000 square mile desert and nobody else anywhere around you, but if you're saved, you're alone. Because you've got somebody living inside of you. Christianity is a receiving of Christ. Number two, it's a representing of God in society. We should represent His grace. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are His workmanship. We are His workmanship. Now that carries a couple of thoughts with it. One is, He's always working on us. Anybody, anybody remember that little song, He's still working on me? Amen. I got news for you today. He is still working on me. But as he works on me, Brother Austin, he puts me in society. That folks can watch and see his workmanship in me and use me as an instrument through which he works in the lives of others. It's a representing of God in his grace in the society in which we live. Number two, it's a representing of his greatness. You know something the unsaved world should never hear us that are saved say? I can't. Unsaved world should never hear those of us that are saved, particularly in the area of spiritual matters, say, I can't. Because Philippians 4.19 says that we can. It says that I can. I, I hadn't even got to have. I've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost in me. So that makes four. Right? The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost in me. That makes four. So it, it's it, in society, I can. Or if you want to use this term, which is actually better, we can. We can do all things. We can do all things. We can represent and let, let society see the greatness of God in us. There ain't nothing great about us as individuals, but there's something great about the one that's on the inside of us. Amen? And, and, and we ought to represent Him well. But not only that, in representing His glory. His glory. One of the things that excites me about what lies in the future for us as God's children, for those of us that are God's children, been born again, and brought into God's family and labeled as Christians. 
One of the things that excites me about the future for us is we're going to get to see His glory. Now, He has a glory in and of Himself. But I'm looking at, with my physical eye this morning, a group of people that one day is going to bring glory to Him beyond our imagination. Now, looking at us this morning, it's hard to, it's hard to get your mind around how in the world we're going to do that. But we are going to do that. The Bible declares that one day we are going to bring glory. But, Brother Austin, while we're here in this society, we are representatives of His glory. Amen of what God is capable of doing. Let me give you the last one. Christianity is receiving Christ in salvation. Christianity is a representing of God in our society in which we live. I wonder, I wonder this morning how many people, before I move on, I wonder how many people just by being around you, not by what you said, but by what they've seen in you would, would, would identify you as a Christian. I understand school's going to start back this year for too long. Those of you that are in school, how many of your classmates would look at you so that's a Christian. In the work world, your co-workers, how many uh, would look at you? That's a Christian. That's a Christian. The last one I want us to consider this morning. Christianity is a responding to Christ in service. Jesus gathered a rather unusual group of men while he was here on earth who became his apostles. And he said to them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. When we are fishers of men, we are servants. Servants carry out the commands of their master. Sister Kim works as a nurse. Now, Sister Kim probably knows pretty much and probably very well the routine of the job that she has. But I know during this pandemic, some of her routine was changed. Because she is a servant to the one that she is employed by, the one that signs on the line of that little thing that has numbers on it. Because of that, they changed up her area of service. Give you a different assignment for a time, did they not, sister? Had to do something different. Servants do what their master instructs them to do. Well, for you and I that are a Christian, one of the things that Christ says that He wants us to do is be a fisher of men. A fisher of men. Now, if Brother Dale is going fishing, I know we have the fishermen in here, but Brother Dale, all of us know that Brother Dale fishes. Right? Brother Dale fishes. He goes fishing. Normally when Brother Dale goes fishing, he catches fish. Most of the time. Right, Brother Dale? Most of the time. But he don't just go out there unprepared. He makes preparation. Probably if I went fishing with Brother Dale, what he'd do, probably what Brother Dale would do, just to see if I knew anything about fishing, is we'd probably get out there and Brother Dale would say, all right, preacher, get after it. 
I might or might not know what to do. But the devil knows what to do. He knows what kind of bait to take. You got a big tackle box, Brother Dale? Why do you carry a big tackle box, Brother Dale? Sir? Because you got a choice. Different baits, right? Different baits. I mean, he don't go out there just one bait, Riley. If he does, and the fish ain't biting that particular bait that day, he's going to come back to the house empty, and Miss Charlene's not going to be happy. So he takes a big tackle box. Real fishermen have gigantic tackle boxes. Amen? And they know all the latest. Christianity is service. And we serve God by being fishers of men. Number two, we serve God by being fruit bearers. Christians are fruitful. They bear fruit. We bear, we bear the fruit of the Spirit in our life. Those nine manifestations of the fruit of the Spirit in our life, that are given in the book of Ephesians, those things are easily seen in our life. Folks see that in our life. And Christians are not just servants, they're faithful servants. The tragedy today is, is there are many folks who sit in what the world terms as Christian churches, deceived into believing that that makes them a Christian. Like the Scribes and the Pharisees of Jesus' day, they're deceived into believing that their religion makes them a Christian. Let me give you the definition of religion. You ready? What man does for God. It's what man does for God. But Christianity, on the other hand, or salvation, is what God, and only God, can do and does do for man. And you know what that is? He offers eternal life. And our text gives us the test to find out whether or not we are a Christian. Let me, read, let me read the verses again. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him, who? God a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this record that God hath given us to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life and he that hath not the son hath not life these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the son of God so here's the question today are you a Christian? You're not a Christian because you belong to a church. You're not a Christian because you're uneducated or highly educated. You're not a Christian because of your place in society, economically, whatever, whatever area you want to look at. You're not a Christian because you've, you've, you've read some plan. You're not a Christian because... You signed up for some reform program. You're not a Christian because you turned over a new leaf. You're not a Christian because you turned around in the road. You're a Christian because you have Christ abiding in you. And you've given your life to Him to be obedient to whatever He said. For us to do. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Brother Cecil, if you'd come.
in a nutshell. Christianity, Christianity is having Christ living in your life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That is Christianity. Not something you get up and put on Sunday morning and go to church, go back home and take it off and put it back in the closet. It is a person. It is not a plan. It is not a program. It is a person. A person. The Son of God that lives inside of you. If you're not here today, or if you are here today and you have not, you have not received the gift God offers you today eternal life in his son Christ. I pray today that you get up out of your seat and come. Brother Curtis and Brother Austin is going to come and stand with me and Brother Bert. And if God's spoken to your heart today and you need to come and receive Christ, you can leave here today a child of God. You can leave here today with your sins forgiven. You can leave here today with your name written in the Lamb's book of life as we stand together and sing number number 67